Hello, this is Carmen from the Singer Featherweight Shop. Uh, today I wanted to take just a moment, talk to you about the tension unit on the Singer Featherweight and um, how to disassemble it, how to clean it, and uh, get it put back together in the proper order. Uh, the first thing that I will explain here is the, the, the tension unit has this knob out here on the end and what you can't see when it's on the machine is this little knob that sticks out here and you also can't see these little holes on the numbered portion of the dial these numbered or these holes here on the numbered portion along with that pin is what keeps this from spinning completely off of the machine so in order to disassemble your tension unit all you need to do is push in on that number dial like that so that it's away from that pin and then turn the tension knob all the way to the left and it will come right off. Once it is off of off of the, the post here, this whole unit will slide off of your machine. That is your tension unit right there along with that piece. There it's all in your hands. Um, this tension unit in particular looks like somebody's maybe dumped some oil in it or something, which the tension unit is not something that gets that gets lubricated. So what you want to do is take it all apart. You can just see here the pieces almost stick together because there's so much oil and junk on there. You want to take a uh, maybe some kerosene and a, a cotton uh, rag and wipe these down, get them all clean. The other thing to look for is your tension discs. This is the two tension discs. If these happen to have any rust on them, uh, these are a little dirty, but no rust that I can see. If they had rust on them that would uh, cause resistance as the thread is going through there, that's going to foul up your tension. Uh, these discs need to be completely clean. These two discs right here, they almost stick themselves together because there's oil or something on them. So we just wipe them off with a with a rag. You can also use you know metal polish, things like that, uh, even some fine steel wool. Uh, if you have any rusty spots on them. Anyway, we get them clean and we clean up the other parts and then we're gonna uh, reassemble uh, the tension unit. The first thing I'm gonna sh show you though right here is, let's see if we can get a, a little bit more light down in there. There is a, a set screw which is actually, if I can get some light there, there we go. Uh, there's a, a set screw that's down inside this hole right here. And that is what keeps uh, the post of the tension unit uh, attached to the machine. Now, unless this post is damaged, or if it is no longer, if the slot in it is no longer horizontal, if it's been turned, there's really, and unless those things have happened, there's really no reason to mess with this screw right here that's down in there. We would just clean off clean off that um, that that post there and uh, and leave it alone this particular one fortunately the uh, the slot here is basically horizontal and if it wasn't horizontal what would happen is your plus and minus uh, indicator would be turned because you can see from this post here that goes across the middle that that's how it goes on and if it's horizontal then plus and minus and the indicator will be directly up at the top if this post has been turned then your indicator is going to be turned as well wouldn't necessarily affect your tension but it will affect um, the way this the way your indicator looks I'm gonna move my light here see if we can get some proper view of reassembling this. So the order that this thing goes back together, bear with me here as I clean some of these these parts off, the order that this thing goes back together is like this here. You have, uh, this is uh, your, your piece here, it has the little, uh, your thread will go back uh, behind there once it's all assembled. You put your two discs together like such and they go behind there. Now the next thing you'll do is the spring here. 
and it goes like this with the bulk, the coiled part of the spring back behind these discs and the other single piece out here in the front. When you slip it on to the post here of the tension unit, uh, I prefer to have this take up spring down here at about the seven o'clock position. As soon as I, let me move my light again here, This a little bit better angle. I prefer to have this down here in about the seven o'clock position, your take up spring. And as you push it on, if you push it in all the way and then move your, t your spring up, uh, it's gonna be below the stop here and that's not where we want it. So if you have it in a, the seven o'clock position, and I'm gonna slide it back off here just for a second so you can see something. These little, little teeth here on the post, those are to catch this one little piece on the spring right there. So when you slide this spring back onto the post, if it's in about the seven o'clock position, as you slide it on, it's hanging down here at about seven o'clock, you push it in only until that little portion on the spring, and I'll show you this again, this little ear right there. You push it in just far enough until that catches one of those teeth. And then once it catches, you can then take your finger, move the spring up above the, the catch there, and push it the rest of the way in. Now it has just a minor, just a small amount of spring, and that's all that's really necessary with the take up spring. It's just that it has a, a little bit of take up left there. So anyway, so now we've got this part on. The rest is pretty easy. You put the indicator cup on next. Starting to look like a tension unit again. And then you put the, the main tension spring on. Uh, it's, it's coiled up like a, like a snake here. And the, this bar here in the center is going to go through the, the, um, the post on the tension unit. And you want it to start going down first. So you don't want it going up like this first. You want it going down. So we slide that on next. The next piece we put on is this little, little piece here. And it has this little catch. And that's what's catching uh, on the, uh, the number dial. And it's what keeps everything from spinning all the way off there. But um, that, little, that little piece there should be pointing out. Push it back in, just like such, okay? And then when I put the, the next item that goes on is the, the numbered dial. And when I put this on, I prefer to put it on with the three up at the top. It's just, just how I do it. It doesn't have to probably be exactly like that. And so now you push it in and you're gonna hold it in there basically keeping the pressure on it with your thumb. And then you start the large tension knob, get it on there a few turns, and then let it pop into, you're gonna go, I'll show you on this other one here, you're gonna go um, until you get it to pop into one of those grooves. At this point in time, your tension unit is reassembled, but it's completely not calibrated. And so, um, the first thing, and, and we have another video on the uh, adjusting your bobbin case tension because that's really the where you have to start. Uh, a proper looking stitch is really a balance between the top and the bottom thread and how it locks together. And so you can have a balanced tension with the top and the bottom both too loose but balanced or both too tight but balanced. Uh, the loose one is going to give you loose stitches and the uh, if it's if it's balanced but both are too tight you're gonna have fabric that probably puckers and so anyway what you want to do is to adjust the um, bobbin tension first and we've got videos on how to do that once you know that your bobbin tension is adjusted correctly then you can come back and recalibrate this 
So don't worry about the number that it's on. Once you've got the bottom set correctly, you start sewing. If, uh, the, if you have loops on the bottom, then you would simply increase your, your top tension until you're happy with the stitch. Once again, not worrying about uh, what number it is on. And so you might get it to a perfect stitch, but it really, um, but it's set on zero or one. Uh, that's okay. Uh, the, the important thing is to get your stitch right first. Once it's correct, then what you can do is push in on this numbered portion and turn it. But you want to turn it without turning this, because this is actually what's adjusting the tension. So you want to push in and turn either left or right. And sometimes, if these are really tight, it helps to have somebody else come along and hold this so it doesn't move. And then you, come, you take both thumbs and push in on this and turn to where you want it. An original uh, setting coming from the factory would have probably been a four. And so um, now if, you're, if your bottom tension is right, you can adjust this any place that you want. And uh, that's, that's really all there is to adjusting the top tension. I know a pretty simple video for tonight, but... Uh, we'll come back and do a more uh, in-depth one, but we needed to answer some, some Facebook questions today, and so we thought we'd just do a quick one, and I hope this helps, and by all means, uh, please uh, email us with any questions or uh, send us a question on Facebook as well. Thanks. Have a good night.